Well, uh, good morning. Uh, as Javier said, I'm going to talk about uh, basically to restricted Boltzmann machine, which are the base for the belief networks. If you understand RBMs, then uh, it's easy to, to build a DBN. So yesterday, uh, Xavi told you about this. Uh, he gave you a, an overview of different architectures. And one of them was this belief, the belief networks that are based on our RBM. So just to, to remind you uh, what it was an, an RBM. An RBM, uh, let's say, it's, a, it's an R, uh, a basic architecture oops, with, uh, with two uh, layers. Let's say we have the visible layer where we have the input data and the hidden layer. We can uh, actually RBMs come from the graph theory, from the graphical uh, theory with um, markup chains and so. So that's why uh, most people, when refer to RBMs, say, okay, it's restricted because nodes within one layer are not uh, connected. That's why it's restricted and it's bipartite because, uh, let's say, that the probabilities of each uh, of each, uh, let's say, hidden element is independent of the the elements uh, in the same layer of the other hidden layers. Okay, of the other yes, of the other hidden uh, elements. Okay, so this basic uh, architecture is shallow to layer, and uh, let's say that the weights that we compute uh, to to interact between visible and hidden layers are shared are the same from one direction to the other direction. However, the biases are very important here and are different from one side to the other, okay? Uh, also, Xavier uh, showed you this uh, slide from Geoffrey Hinton, the one that the professor that developed this, this mm, uh, the restricted Boltzmann machines and the deep belief, deep belief networks. Uh, and uh, he said, okay, there is this procedure that goes up and down to estimate the parameters. And, uh, and at the end, we, we have a nice estimation of the parameters. Okay, but uh, the idea was uh, to go a little bit farther from, from here. And afterwards, we'll talk about something similar to that, the same thing, but with another uh, drawing. But we will have more insight on what we are doing here. So as a as a network, as a neural network, it's very easy to understand that we have a, a forward pass and a backward pass in an RBM. And in, in the forward pass, we have the inputs that go through, this, uh, through the different connections plus the bias and then the activation. And this is the output of this forward pass. And we also have the backward pass where now uh, the outputs of the hidden layer act as inputs and in this direction. So the idea is go back to the input and, uh, and, and reconstruct, let's try to reconstruct the, the input. Okay, so uh, in a way, um, this process can, can go on, on and on and at the end, uh, you will have a, com a convergence of this procedure. And um, before that, I mean, this is a, a probabilistic model. And uh, what you get at the beginning is, is this probability of your, uh, of your inputs, your real inputs. And what you get from the procedure ha will have another distribution. And you are trying to, to match these two distributions, OK? The training will try to match these two distributions. And the way to measure it is what is called uh, KL divergency. So it measures sort of difference between the, the two distributions, OK? OK, so uh, these are the general ideas. But if we want to go uh, a little beyond, otherwise I will step now to the deep billion network, but I wanted to show you a little bit more, even if the maths that are behind that are not easy, OK? So the math behind is how we estimate the parameters at the, let's say that to establish uh, the problem, it might be 
difficult mathematically, but at the end you can simplify and have a nice solution. So your reference could be just to, to go to the papers and the work of Geoffrey Hinton to, to understand. You also have some other references to, to get into these uh, mathematical concepts and then uh, how you can go through these mathematical concepts to the programming part. So you have this uh, deeplearning.net uh, uh, web site where you, you have a nice explanation of the RBMs and also it's uh, followed by some Theano functions and concepts to, to program these restricted Boltzmann machines. You can also uh, go through, I mean, I've been looking what was nice uh, about this, uh, you could find uh, uh, of uh, restricted Boltzmann machines or the build never, and you can go to this course, it's very complete. So let's say he, he has here a nice, uh, if you want to uh, go deeper into this, uh, he, there is a course there of neural networks and there are some parts which are devoted to restricted Boltzmann machines. We cannot go ob obviously through all the mathematical details, but if you want uh, to, to get more inside, you can go here. He has nice slides and, and videos of the restricted Boltzmann machine and deep belief networks, okay? So, uh, so I, I was doubting what uh, mathematical uh, um, formulas I would show you, I could show you and not to puzzle too much in these few minutes that we have, but I have uh, chosen some of these uh, uh, concepts to, to give you just an introduction of what's behind uh, an RBM, okay? So this is, uh, this is the way, he, uh, I mean, this is how an RBM is established and the, the important part is that these RBMs are uh, define it through what is called an energy function. So you have here an energy function that depends on obviously the weights, uh, the hidden variables, and the weights that, that relate one to them, and the biases uh, which, are, which are obtained to get the estimation of x every time or the estimation of the hidden variables. Okay, so this is the basic uh, function of an RBM and uh, from here you get a distribution, a joint distribution of, of X and H which is given by, by this formula that we want to analyze. There is something that uh, is called partition function which is intractable but at the end, uh, okay, this is the, the energy function, the basic thing. Uh, we want to do like we have seen in other networks which is, okay, I want to minimize the, the negative likelihood over some training data. So that's that function that we, we also saw yesterday. Okay. And uh, the way to minimize it is by doing the stochastic gradient descent. Okay. And this, if you apply this stochastic gradient descent to uh, your uh, log probability minus log probability, you end up having something which uh, mathematically it's a little bit uh, complicated. It's like an expectation of uh, your, the, the derivative, the partial derivative of the parameters of this energy. See here that the energy is, uh, is uh, over your observation, that means your, your training samples, condition it to your training samples, okay? This is called positive phase and it depends on the observations and you have another term which is the negative phase and depends on this uh, joint expectation of X and H and is the, the, the derivative of uh, this energy of X and H, the, the true, the true uh, variables, okay? Uh, this is hard to compute, uh, however, uh, if you go through the different de mathematical derivations, there is a way to approximate this, this term, okay? And the way to do it, uh, it's, a, it's a, a procedure that is called contrastive divergence, and what it does is to approximate this expectation to a sample point, eh, which is that x tilde, and it's done in that procedure that we saw at the beginning of the class where you go, go back and forward 
from your observations to the hidden variables, and at the end you obtain a, an estimation of this, of, of this uh, point estimation, x tilde. Okay? This is called Gibbs sampling. Uh, you can go through, I mean, it's, it's not easy to explain in one minute, but this is the general idea. Uh, these are conditional probabilities, pay h condition uh, over x and pH uh, condition to h, uh, are easy to obtain compared to, to the initial probability. Okay? So at the end, you, you may uh, approximate these expectations of the partial derivatives over uh, a, a given point, and that's the, that's the, the idea. Uh, uh, well, I, I will go fast from that, but uh, just think that we have these uh, approximations, and, and at the end, uh, what you want is to build an algorithm to, to update your parameters, okay, so that means your W your, and your two biases, and first, if you do this uh, partial derivative of the, over the y's, you get something as simple as, as this, uh, so the product of uh, h and, or outer product of h and x. And uh, as you may at the end find, oh, this is not well seen, but as this is a t, as you may see, this, uh, this h is computed like we did in, in with the sigmoid function, okay, when it's, uh, and, and then so, so to build this uh, expected uh, expectation over the partial derivative, uh, it's just this outer problem of H computed with the sigmoid and NX, okay? So we have a lot of complicated mathematics to at the end go to something that we know it's going to be simple, but it's justified, okay? Okay, and so this is like a summary of this uh, uh, of this weight update. Like you had uh, that the, mm, the negative log likelihood is, was the first formula that came into these expectations. You grow through this step, and at the end you get this approximation, which is what you can easily compute. Okay, that is this uh, hidden variable over the observations. Okay, and this is, uh, I mean, the outer product with x, and this outer product, which is uh, with the x tilde, which you have obtained after several derivations. Okay, and so that's the way you update your parameters. Um, and and this, you you at the end iterate this procedure, which means you start with this. Uh, uh, example, you estimate the parameters and then you go back with the new estimation of the parameters to, to do this, to obtain this new x tilde and, and, and then you go through the procedure, okay? So this is what is called the uh, contrastive divergency and it's uh, used to train uh, these uh, restricted Boltzmann machines. This is an example of, uh, if you remember, uh, Jose Adrian yesterday showed you one example with m NIST uh, uh, number, written numbers, handwritten numbers. And if you apply this restricted Boltzmann machine to those database, uh, what you obtain is something like this. That means uh, every, let's say, every image here, it's, uh, it's one, one, one input neuron that has, uh, I mean, it's, it's the composition of all the weights that go through that neuron, okay? And see that, uh, well, yesterday I didn't show you what is the result of convolutional neural networks, but at the end, this is like a feature extraction, like we had, uh, we, we saw yesterday. So this, uh, this new, uh, this restricted Boltzmann machine builds uh, these hidden layers that will try also to extract features from your original image. And, and these weird things here are related to, to detect in images like contours or changes of um, contours where you have uh, changes in, in the stroke of the characters. So this detects the different strokes in your MNIST characters. This is an example of what you can get with restricted Boltzmann machines, okay? So these restricted Boltzmann machines 
are at the basis of uh, building the belief networks. I think this is more to understand, and I will I will use the the slides that uh, Xavier used yesterday. So what you end up doing is just uh, uh, building. You can build a network when you you, for example, for classification, you, you will go on and extract different features at different levels. But every time here, it's let's say uh, you're gonna train a restricted Boltzmann machine. You're gonna update your weights here, and once you decide that that's fine enough, okay, uh, then you stop and you fix that the weights of this part of the of the of the layer. Okay, so first you train this, you set the parameters, and then you go to the next uh, step. But now the inputs are not the, the, your data, but are the inputs of the previous layer. You're not going to train anymore the previous layer. You train the second layer, and so on. When you have trained the second layer, you go through the third layer, okay? And, and, and that's the way we, we, we train a deep belief network uh, without using any labeled uh, data. So. Uh, this is a, an unsupervised learning. However, if you have some uh, reduced amount of levels, you can use that just to, you can train like the last part of the network with these labels and, and you will have, a, a, let's say this last part is supervised and you can use it to, to classify uh, if you want or, or, or other tasks, okay? And, and that's it.